hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial now in my previous video I discussed about the demodulation of a double side band full carrier signal using square law demodulator method so in today's video we will be discussing about the envelope detector method or the diode demodulator method for detection of a DSPFC signal so let's get started now <clears throat> the square law demodulator method as I discussed in my previous video was applicable for low amplitude level signals okay in uh, case of signals which are less than 1 volt or the modulation index is less the square law demodulator method was applicable Similarly, the envelope detector method as opposed to the square law demodulator is applicable for high level DSPFC signals which are greater than 1 volt. So, this method is best suited for high amplitude level signals. Now, before going deep into the working principle and block diagram, circuit diagram of uh, this method, we need to understand what is this envelope of an amplitude modulated signal okay now we know that a double sideband full carrier signal is given by this expression vc plus em cos omega mt into cos omega ct so if we open up the bracket we will get ec cos omega ct plus em cos omega mt into cos omega ct which is the carrier frequency signal plus the double sideband suppressed carrier signal consisting of both the sidebands now the purpose of writing this double sideband full carrier signal in this form is because here if you look closely this term which is attached with the cos omega ct part this term is the envelope of the double sideband full carrier signal. Now this envelope is nothing but a time varying amplitude okay. So, you can write it as like this is equal to Et cos omega Ct. Okay, this Et is the time varying amplitude which is attached with the cos omega Ct frequency component. Now this term EC plus EM cos omega MT which is equal to ET is the time varying amplitude okay and that this time varying amplitude is called as the envelope of the DSPFC double sideband full carrier signal. Now it is this envelope which is extracted so as to get this EM cos omega MT part which is the message signal or the modulating signal. So, if we extract the envelope of this uh, double sideband full carrier signal then it will be easy for us to extract the message signal with the help of a suitable filter with a cutoff frequency because this is the DC component which will be anyhow blocked. So, we need this EM cos omega MT part. So, in order to get this EM cos omega MT part we need to extract this envelope the time varying amplitude EC plus EM cos omega MT from the double sideband full carrier signal and this is what is done in the envelope detector method okay so let us uh, understand how this uh, is done now this is the circuit diagram of the envelope detector method for demodulation of a double sideband full carrier signal here we have the double side band full carrier signal which is in the form of an AC signal because it consists of both positive and negative peaks. Then we have is a diode, a capacitor and a resistor. Okay, This is the circuit diagram and all the components are connected in the fashion which is given in the diagram. Now. As I said, the DSPFC signal is in the form of an AC signal 
which is applied as input. Now please uh, draw this diagram in rough or take a screenshot of it so that you understand the upcoming steps in a better way. Now during the positive half cycle of this AC signal or the DSPFC signal, this diode has its P end connected to the positive terminal and uh, N end connected to the negative terminal. So as a result of that this diode will be forward biased, it will conduct and behave as a short circuit. As a result of that, this capacitor will get charged up to the peak value of this signal, which is EC plus EM. The signal, the amplitude, the envelope of the time varying amplitude is the EC plus EM cos omega MT. So the peak value of that envelope is EC plus EM, the positive peak during the positive half cycle. The capacitor will get charged up to EC plus EM. Now, during the negative half cycle, this P end of the diode will be connected to the negative terminal and the N end will be connected to the positive terminal. As a result of that, the diode will be reverse biased. It will be open circuited, open, open terminal. Now, in that case, the capacitor will discharge through the resistor. So, during the positive half cycle, the capacitor gets charged. During the negative half cycle, the capacitor discharges through the resistor. Now, this discharging time is deliberately made very high. The capacitor takes a long period of time to discharge. Now, this is done by adjusting the discharging time constant equals to RC. So, the components, the resistor and capacitor are selected in such a way that the discharging time value will be very high. Now why it is done because that while uh, we, we, we want the capacitor and we want to prevent the capacitor from being discharged too soon. So even when the capacitor the signal is in the negative half cycle the capacitor retains most of its potential. It does not lose it. So by the time the next positive half cycle starts and the capacitor starts charging again, it does not lose most of the stored charge. Okay, So we want the capacitor voltage to remain more or less the same, constant value. That's why even during the discharging time period, the rate of discharge of the capacitor is very low. So it retains most of the charge even during the discharging cycle. We want the capacitor voltage to remain constant, more or less constant. Okay. Now, again when the positive half cycle starts, the diode gets forward biased, gets short circuited and the capacitor again charges up to the peak, uh, positive peak value UC plus EM. Now this charging and discharging cycles, they get repeated continuously. So the voltage output which we get across the capacitor is given by EC plus EM cos omega MT. Okay, this is the signal, the envelope which we were talking about, which we wanted to extract. Okay, so the capacitor gets charged up to, uh, uh, th this is the voltage which is captured or retained by the capacitor. Now, the final output which we get is the DC component gets blocked by the capacitor. As we know, the capacitor blocks the DC components and also uh, and only passes the AC components. So here, the final output we get is EM cos omega MT because the DC component gets blocked by the capacitor, which is AC. And we get the final output in terms of the message signal em cos omega mt so this is the final output of the capacitor or the output of the circuit which is em cos omega mt the ec D, the ec part which is in the form of a dc component gets blocked by the capacitor so this is the method for uh, demodulation of a double sideband full carrier signal using an envelope detector method now in both these methods and even 
the demodulation method we see that always a non linear device mainly diode is always involved okay this is the common thing in all the demodulation methods which we have discussed so in some cases the forward bias and reverse bias properties of the diodes are exploited in some cases the non linear input output relationship of the diode or transistor is exploited so this is the the basic way and another common thing is the use of a filter with a sharp cut off frequency so these are the common things which are involved in the demodulation process whether it is a double side band suppressed carrier signal double side band full carrier signal and also in the single side band a suppressed carrier signal which we will be discussing in the future videos these things will be common a diode a non linear device and a filter these are the common things which are involved in the demodulation process so uh, i hope you like this video so and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much